What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video you know I've been diving through Cobra Kai and I finished season 2 so today we're going to sit down and talk about season 2, my feelings on the new edition of characters, how this season ended, and my feelings going into season 3 so be sure to stay tuned to this video and like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss this kind of content and also these are just my thoughts, my opinions, that means I would love to hear from all of you in the comment section, share your thoughts on Cobra Kai Season 2. So let's get into this. Roll it. Where season 1 of Cobra Kai left us off was pretty awesome. Like, it was, it was more like a finale, and it could have ended right then and there, kind of, you know, you feel it. But we had a little lean-in from Samantha, possibly, you know. Uh, honing her karate stuff again that you know spark coming back to life of you know she wants to do karate again you know Johnny Lawrence finally used his students and Cobra Kai and they were able to conquer the tournament and win the championship and then all of a sudden we had our kind of leaning in like you know cliffhanger that was our one thing our one cliffhanger was the crease intro as he comes in he's like smoking the cigar and he's like in the dark and then he lights himself and walks in and stuff and Johnny Lawrence is just like ah you know, you just get that, like, when I first saw it, I was like, all right, my first thought was, how long is it going to take before I get tired of this character, Crease? That was my thoughts. <laughs> so let's get into season two and start talking about it, as like you said, that's where season one left us off. Now, starting into season two, you know, Cobra Kai is banging, they're popping, they just won the tournament, so now they're very popular again, kids around the school and all kinds of people are talking about them. So it's the big word on campus is that Cobra Kai is where it's at. But also we have Miyagi-Do now having gonna, gonna be having two students as Samantha joins with Robbie. So them two are training together. And I like that factor in this one is it kind of, Daniel's school keeps it very home, like, you know, close to home. You know, it's a very kind of nice, comfortable feeling. He's got the little training center that, you know, him and Mr. Miyagi had and stuff. And it's all about balance. And there's the bonsais and stuff. And then you have Johnny Lawrence's side, which is the Cobra Kai section. And it's more, you know, intense. And it's more, he's still trying to teach lessons, though. I like the fact that Johnny is still trying to teach lessons. I know he's kind of immature in a lot of the ways he goes about what he does. But he's still trying to make Miguel a better person than he was. And I also like the fact that we have a good tussle between Johnny and Kreese. Like they have a good little fight scene in the beginning in that first episode. And they start the fire in the dojo and stuff. So I thought that was pretty like intense. It was a little awesome, impactful first episode. Like, you know, intro scene and stuff like that. Another fabulous thing about this season was it just has this way about it as each theme. Like the first theme, I think, for that first season was bullies. The first, like, the big main negative bad guy was, like, bullies in that first season and what it does to people and how people, you know, what you want to do and how it, you know, affects you as a, you know, child or even as an adult. Like I said, even the one of the bullies was the adult, you know, uh, LaRusso's cousin was bu bullying Robbie. So it's like that factor. I think that theme was very strong in the first season. For the second season, I think it's more about, to be honest, the theme, trying to understand the other one's side. That there isn't always just because someone's different like Miyagi-Do, just because they're different, or just because Cobra Kai's different, doesn't necessarily make them a bad guy. You know what I mean? That's That, that was my kind of takeaway from the theme of this season. And an addition that I greatly appreciated to this season was Peyton List as Tori. I think Peyton List is actually a pretty good actress. She's <clears throat> mainly known for Disney stuff, but she's segue away from that now. And like I said, now she's involved in Cobra Kai and she plays Tori in this one. And I like the fact that she plays a different type of character than Samantha and Miguel and stuff like that. And I know Miguel's not rich, like his family's not rich, but he's got like a very caring mother like you know he's got a he's got a home that, to go to and stuff Peyton List's character Tori is more that character that's a you know tortured past you know going down on the streets kind of thing but has to take care of her home by working like two jobs so I like the addition of her character because I think she's fabulous and she becomes that kind of new love interest for Miguel as Samantha's leaning more towards Robbie now and stuff like that as they're training together. They're building that bond and obviously like I said when Samantha when you're that young and you got them two spending that much time together of course you know she's going to develop feelings for Robbie. Another cool thing about this one is I think the training sequences I have a lot of fun with the training sequences in this season especially one in particular when Johnny sticks the Cobra Kai kids in the back 
back of like a cement truck and makes them turn it and everything. And then you got Daniel LaRusso and he's training his kids to do the whole balance thing. And they're standing on that like circle thing in the little pond water and like have to keep it floating and stuff. So there's a lot of cool training sequences that actually have to do with the ending, you know, episode, like have to do with where we go from there and stuff like that. Or especially when they have that scene where Robbie and Samantha are defending Dimitri and they kind of use LaRusso's technique to fight off all the people. And he's like teaching him, like, if you work together as a unit like this, you'll be able to fend off so many attackers and stuff. So I like that factor in the show is it definitely is trying to stay close to home with the martial arts, the training, but is also trying to make it very grounded and very realistic in that these are people, they have consequences and they have, you know, things going on with them and morals and stuff that they're trying to follow and everything. And Kreese is kind of that one era, like I said, when I was thinking about it, when I first saw him show up at the end of season one, I was like, how long is it going to take me to get tired of this character? And they use him pretty well in this season. I wasn't unhappy with it. They use him very well. The writers, they kind of play on this whole... Maybe he has turned a new leaf thing, you know, Crease, he's still like a hard ass, but maybe he's turned a new leaf. They kind of tease you with that and stuff. And then Johnny like, you know, follows him and finds out that he's, he's lying and he's been living in these like kind of halfway homes for like the last 10 years and stuff. And it creases very down in the dumps kind of thing, you know, after Cobra Kai fell apart and, you know, Mr. Miyagi made a fool of him. So <laughs> it's like that aspect of the show, it shows you that. Johnny feels remorse, feels sympathy for him because that's where Johnny was at. And then he found Miguel and trained Cobra Kai and built this new thing and stuff like that. I also think it's really funny that Johnny's like altercations with the landlord. That's hilarious and stuff. But that kind of moment kind of sucks because that's the one where Crease, you know, you finally lands that bad guy spot when Johnny comes back and stuff. After that last episode, we must must talk about that last episode now is that the school fight scene. That fight sequence is really cool. Very reminiscent of like a Daredevil sequence from Netflix. Like in the kids, the choreography, the fighting, all that shit is improving and they look so good at it. And even Hawk, like I think it's hilarious when everybody starts fighting and then Hawk's like, yeah, like let's go. And like, it's just like rumble time and stuff. But I knew once that rumble started that something was going to go down. You know what I mean? Like I was like, damn, we're going to have a dark moment. And it's gonna go down. And they left. They let Robbie, you know, kick my boy Miguel off that railing, and he fell down the stairs. You know what I mean, all the way to the bottom. And ugh, it was not pretty looking. Like so, where they left our boy Miguel at the end of the season, it's not not pretty. So that's one thing that I was like, dang. Like I knew it was something bad was gonna happen when that rumble started. <coughs> and then it kind of leads into Crease talked to the landlord while Johnny was gone when he went to go handle some situations with his brothers, you know what I mean, his family, you know, his friends from back in the day, you know, one of them was passing away and dying and sick, so they went to go spend time with him and stuff like that, did a very nice, peace, peaceful homage episode that was like a send-off to that character, and I think that was really sweet for that actor, that, you know, that character, he actually did pass away, so I think it's very sweet that they fit that episode in the season, but of course, while Johnny was gone, Crease took that opportunity to, you know, wiggle his way in with the landlord. And now apparently Cobra Kai is his place. Johnny comes back and sees them training and stuff. And he's down in the dumps again now because he's so upset of what happened to his star pupil, you know, Miguel. And because that was like his son, like, you know, Robbie is Johnny's son, but Miguel is like a new, like, you know, like a surrogate son to him. And you can tell Johnny was very broken up about what happened. And even Amanda LaRusso, when she's yelling at Daniel about how this is your fault and the karate and stuff and how the kids kind of took the feud to the next level. They took that, you know, Johnny versus Daniel, like, you know, Miyagi-Do versus Cobra Kai feud to the next level. And the adults weren't there to step in and tell you like, oh, come on, taper it back now. But a couple things I have problems with that episode is that the teachers took forever to show up, okay? Teachers would not take forever to show up. And I know security guards. I know some security guards. And they would have been more than happy to get up in there and, like, sh fucking get some kids on the ground and, like, shove them down and hold them back. Like, you know what I mean? You you're not supposed to do so much of that stuff. But, no, they would have they would have been in there getting down and dirty and those security guards would have broke that shit up. So that's one thing that kind of bothered me about that. And then also Robbie disappears. Like, Robbie just disappears for, like, the whole... Once he kicks Miguel off that thing, he fucking disappears. And I kind of wanted to know where Robbie was going to be before they ended that episode. Because this is the last episode of season two. 
so I kind of wanted to know where he was at and everything. I figured he just ran away and stuff because Robbie knows how to live off the streets and all that kind of stuff. So I figured he just ran away. You know, they, I guess they didn't have to show us, but... And then uh, Amanda LaRusso, I think, is a great character as well. Still very grounded, significant other that I like for Daniel. And she has honest stuff to say to him. And I like the fact that when that episode when she's telling him, like, you know, karate's taking over. What's going on, bro? Like, that's just, you know, that's not going to be forever. You and me, this, this is forever. Our job, our livelihood, that's forever. So she's still very grounded, very realistic, and a uh, awesome point an awesome thing for Daniel because she's like said the stone as I said in my first review for season one Amanda LaRusso is like the stone that holds the family together and I like that factor of that but in terms of the ranking or rating for this season like I would say there are some things I really do love in this season better than season one in terms of additions of some of the characters um, the training sequences and the, and the fight choreography is a lot better in the second season so but I love the first season because of the journey it takes us on and the success that Johnny has. And yes, it's a cliffhanger ending, which is kind of wonky. Like that's kind of weak sauce. Like I hate the cliffhanger ending sometimes. But for TV shows, you got to do that a lot because you got to dredge up some, you know, entertainment and some, you know, like some, what is it called? Anxious, like get people hyped up. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of the word. You want to get people hyped up for your next season. So that that's the word I was trying to think of. And so they had to do that cliffhanger one. So, but I would say right now, in terms of the show as a whole, it's probably still sitting at an eight out of 10. It's still a very solid watch for me. Like I said, season two, I would probably say I like season one a little bit, tiny bit better, just a hair, like a tiny bit better than season two. But season two was still a banger for sure. And like I said, very action-packed choreography and all that kind of stuff. And now we're leading into season three, What's going to happen? Miguel is in the hospital. He's injured. He's currently in a coma. Robbie's on the run. Daniel's getting ready Miyagi-Do. He's taking all his stuff down, you know, talking to Mr. Miyagi's picture like, I'm sorry, I, I failed. Like, I just, I thought I was doing the right thing. And he's packing all his karate stuff up away. And Johnny is, like I said, down in the dumps drinking again because his star pupil, his, you know, surrogate second son is now very hurt in a coma and that and Cobra Kai got taken from Johnny so he doesn't have that to fall back on either and now we have the other students under the tutelage of Crease and what is that going to do to them for Cobra Kai so I'm very excited about this one season three just to see where they're going to take us but I'm a little worried a little worried that once you start getting into this territory the season three is season four and we have so many storylines going on like we have a couple main storylines like the johnny and daniel one and their children but then we got side stuff going on like now we have the tori and crease storyline going on as she's very loyal to him now because of what he did for her so there's a lot of elements that are going to come into factor in that season three and i'm wondering is it going to feel rushed are they going to be able to handle it all in season three and make it feel good? Like, you know what I mean? Because there's only 10 episodes. They're pretty short episodes. And like I said, I don't want them to rush through stuff. What I like about Cobra Kai so far is they're keeping it very grounded and very realistic. And they're not rushing. They're taking their time with things and they're building this up. And I'm hoping season three, they're able to continue that. But as I said, these are just my thoughts and my opinions on season two of Cobra Kai. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this and be sure to like and subscribe so you get more videos like this and stay tuned to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.